Welcome to Le Grand Voyage with Chateau Malartic La Gravière. The few things quite as distinctive in their shape as a bottle of Bordeaux wine. It's one of those iconic shapes, you could recognise it in silhouette, couldn't you? And it tells us not only a bit about the history of the bottle, but also about the wine that's inside it. If we go and talk about the bottle, and actually when you talk to bottle manufacturers they discuss wine bottles in very human terms. This is the head, that's the neck, we have the shoulder here, the body of the bottle and its foot. Actually before we go on I'll just tell you a little bit of a detail. You'll notice I cut the foil here, below the lip of the bottle rather than above it. There's a kind of historical reason, it's rather lost in the mists of time now, but these foils used to be made of lead and if there was any fluid underneath you'd sometimes get a build-up of lead salts that are quite poisonous. So careful sommeliers would know to cut the foil there so you could properly clean the head of the bottle before you poured it and risked poisoning your guests. The shoulder is very important in a bottle of uh, a Bordeaux. You notice it's a broad-shouldered bottle. That's not just because it's a broad-shouldered wine. It's because the wines themselves, particularly the reds, what they'll do is they'll leave a sediment after a few years and as you decant them what you want to do is to be able to catch that sediment here so that as you decant it, we'll perhaps do it in another of these little films, we'll decant it and see if we can just catch all the sediment in that shoulder. If we had the narrower sloping shoulder of a burgundy bottle it would end up falling into the decanter. The other thing that's very distinctive is this thing under here. You'll notice my finger disappears. This is the punt. Sometimes people say, is it a good wine because it has a deep punt? Well no, although it's not actually the worst rule in the world. Expensive bottles will have a deep punt and on the whole people don't put cheap wine into expensive bottles so it's not the worst rule of thumb ever. Actually it does have a, a purpose. Wine bottles were, certainly modern wine bottles, were invented as it happens by an Englishman, a guy called Sir Kenelm Digby, a remarkable character, a privateer. He, uh, his father was a gunpowder plotter and he spent much of his life trying to sort of restore the family's honour. He created a new blend of glass using various additives and firing it over coal rather than over wood which made for a much stronger bottle. And when they blew it, it blew like a, a balloon and it wasn't in this sort of shape, certainly not until about the 1750s. And so what he did when, when they were blowing it, they would put it on a pointy stick and it created a point and so it would have this base, if you like, the foot of the balloon that it could go and rest on. That stayed because when the bottles went into this shape in the 1740s, 1750s, they realised that actually this arch is rather like the arch of a bridge, it made the whole thing much stronger. It is actually possible, although I won't try it now, to drop a Bordeaux bottle from quite a large height and that will give the strength to stop it from smashing. There's all sorts of history, of course now we recognise that Bordeaux comes in that shape, so Bordeaux whites come in it as well as Bordeaux reds. The big change really was that change in the middle of the 18th century when we made these flat-sided bottles. That allowed people to go and leave their wines on its side and then they could go and store them for years and years and years and the wines would mature and develop over time. But that's for another time. I shall now leave you and remind you to come back another day, come back tomorrow, where we'll have more stories from Bordeaux and Chateau Malartic La Gravière. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.